Hey everybody, Dieter Kurtenbach. This is Logan Murdoch. We're still in Cleveland, Ohio. I had a game four of the NBA Finals. It's a bit of a practice day. The question now is when the Warriors are going to finish this thing off. They're up 3-0. No team has ever come back from 3-0. This Cleveland Cavaliers team is not going to be coming back from 3-0. So is it going to be game four, Logan? I think it's going to be uh, I think it's going to be game four. Okay. I think we're going to Oakland not for you know, an extra game, but for the season. I think I was talking to um, Nick Young, and he was talking about the champagne and, and how he's going to be able to, uh, you know, how he's going to react once that happens. Oh, okay. That so happens. I see that they've jumped ahead a little bit. That's um, the big. That's if the big and when that happens. Steve. If and when that happens. Um, but I do think that they're, they're, you know, they're, they're they really want to get this done here. And I think that yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of symbolism in getting it done here um, in this in this building and sweeping for the first time during the championship. Run. Yeah. So I think that's that's a big motivation for them. And they're, I mean, you see them back here. They're as loose as they've been all year. And I think yeah. That, um, you know, we'll see what happens. But I think that they really want to get I agree with that. I mean, the sweep is the one thing they haven't done, but you also have to take into account that the one thing that they have been really good at doing this year is messing around when the pressure is off. I mean, whether that's in-game, big picture, whatever, and there's no pressure. I mean, I don't know if you guys can see it behind us, but these guys are, as Logan said, loose. It's over. They know it's over. The Cavs know it's over but they still got to go out and, and play game four. The question is what the Cavs are going to bring to the table. It sounded like from talking to them earlier today, they're trying to talk themselves in to give them a, a good effort. I get it. Can't blame them. Um, you also have everything hanging over that Cavs team with LeBron James. In, in game four, I'll just go ahead and say it, going to be the last game he plays in Cleveland this year, perhaps forever what? As, a home, as a home player. But while I, while I do get what you're saying with, yeah. with the Warriors being too loose, they played their worst. They probably played arguably their worst, worst game rough. of the series yeah. in Game Three. And it and it's yeah. one point to that. And the second point on that is, last year the, the Cavs did a historic performance to beat them right. in one game. And do they have <laughs> do they have 24 threes left? Do they have no, that? Do this they team have does that? not. This team does not. So and I think even if the Warriors play their B game, I think that they can win this thing. Because because I just feel like they've shown that they've. Even in this series, when they played bad, they could still yeah. beat this team. I mean, it is funny. You think about how different this series would look if game one was a little bit different, yeah. if Kevin Durant isn't insane yesterday. But you can only take what's in front of you. And what's in front of you is a 3-0 lead going into a game four against a Cavs team that isn't as good as the last year's Cavs team. I don't know how much the Warriors have dropped since last year, but sure, sure as hell not as much as the Cavs have dropped. Yeah, but I mean, I don't think it really matters, right? I mean, no. how much they've dropped because, I mean, there's still that the gap is still Still here oh, it's team. a massive game. Yeah, yeah. And we were talking about this last night after the game. These Cavs aren't even the second best team in the NBA. As much as we would like for these to be the NBA Finals, I think the Warriors face their best adversary in the Western Conference Finals, and this is sort of a perfunctory performance. Lending to your point, though, Stephen Curry goes one of ten, one of eleven from yeah. three point last night. Klay Thompson has ten points. Mm -hmm. A monsoon is coming from the Splash Brothers. Yeah. Can the Cavs do anything to stop that? They're probably going to keep blitzing Steph. Clay is still injured. Kevin Durant's not going to go for a hyper efficient 43 again. But yeah, they're not going to be. Too, yeah. yeah, they're not going to be. They're not going to so be I, that I, bad. I they're the like, two I of mean, the best shooters of all time. Yeah, and I think that this has been the story of the season, right? I think we talk about how um, the Warriors have all the tools to win this game. Sure. Because yeah. they can win this game at all at all times. But even like even when someone is off, they can win this this, this series. As we right? saw. And that's why I think it's going to be a sweep. And I, I think because yeah. even when um, even when they're at their worst, even if you know Kevin goes eight for something, yeah. or and they get twenty each from Clay and Steph, it, I, they can win this thing. The they big, win. the big question that I have to see from the Cavs because it really just comes down to heart mm -hmm. and pride. Yeah. If the Cavs punch first mm -hmm. and the Warriors punch back, which is no guarantee, yeah. But let's just say the Cavs come out here, play with some pride, punch first. Warriors punch back. What the hell do the Cavs do then? I bet they pack it up, head out to Cancun, get their vacation started on a weekend. I would, I'll just be honest, I would never prolong the inevitable, right? Do you think this is a Boston 2010 vibey when we see mm. LeBron walk off that court? I mean, I know it's different because he didn't walk off the court for the final time in Cleveland, but I'll tell I mean, you, will yeah. it be that kind of moment? It's going to be weird. If, they, if the Cavs lose tomorrow, it's going to be weird. And I know where I want to be in this arena. I want to be right down that tunnel. I want to be in that moment. I want to feel that moment because you, I, I'm always talking about you know themes and vibes and all yeah. that stuff. There's going to be some vibes in that tunnel if the Warriors win. Not only cel celebratory vibes from the Warriors, but this is—I mean, let's be honest. This is probably the end of this rivalry. 
Whether LeBron comes back to Cleveland or not, this Cavs team isn't on the same level. You got the Celtics, you got the Sixers, you maybe got another team in the East looming. Mm -hmm. They're coming up. Yeah. You have seven games to beat the Boston Celtics without Kyrie, without Gordon Hayward. It ain't happening again next year. There's nothing these Cavs strapped Cavs can do to get over, to get anybody big new into town. They already made their big moves. They're, they're scrambling at this point. So if LeBron does come back, I don't think he's back in the NBA Finals next year. I think he's riding out into the sunset, which means that one of the greatest NBA Finals rivalries of all time is probably coming to an end Friday, and if not, it's coming to an end Monday in Oakland. That's something we got to savor while it's still round. One last question for you, this is a Cavs-related question. You talked about the only way that the, these Cavs can win is a mindset from the Warriors, right? But if the Cavs do win, what, who has to play well other than Love and, Love and LeBron? Because those are the two givens in this series. Well, the funny thing is, I would say Rodney Hood, but Rodney Hood had his game. Yeah. Rodney Hood ain't doing that. Mm -hmm. So then you're taking into account the other guys. I mean, they need J.R. Smith to shoot the ball well. And then they need J.R. Smith to not be a comical liability on the defensive end. He can get the first part done. Yeah. We saw it a little bit in the first half. He was knocking down open threes. He's going to get them. He has to knock them down. But he was so bad defensively in the second half. Kevin Durant's shot was over him. I don't know what you could do to stop Kevin Durant. He's seven feet and can jump and shoot from anywhere. He's 34 feet away from the basket. But the, the play with Draymond's dunk in the final minute, I, I, don't, I, I honestly feel like I could provide a better chat than what J.R. Smith did. He spun himself around on a double team. I don't know how you do it. That's, that's the guy who really needs to step up. If J.R. Smith has a good game, game four might be interesting. There's a little bit of pride. LeBron can kind of leave with his head held high. Yeah. I don't know if that's going to happen, though. I mean, we want to talk about MVPs, right? Curry, Durant, the real MVP of this series has been J.R. Smith. That's just, that's just facts. <laughs> well, this is just facts. We are here in Cleveland. We will see you tomorrow. Check out Dieter Curtinbach's work. This is great work. Check out my work. I do all right work. <laughs> and we'll see you guys tomorrow uh, for the Bay Area News Group and the San Jose Mercury News.